and and the same token it is so unbelievably frustrating that this is continuing to happen and that this company who issues safety statements on common sense and on how to walk on uneven surfaces and on backing your vehicle does not address this openly and publicly with its employees. Let's bring Karen Hooper into this conversation, who's written about both women uh, for the nation. Karen, joining us from Baltimore, tell us about how Lisa and Jamie's picture stories fits into a larger picture. Well, um, uh, I think what's interesting is that both women originally thought they were alone in what happened to them. But what we're starting to see is there's been a rash of incidences of sexual assault or sexual harassment or retaliation for um, complaining about either of those things uh, against KBR, Halliburton, and some of their subsidiaries over there in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, their, uh, Jamie Lee's attorney has 15 cases alone, um, and as Jamie noted, there's 40 women who've contacted, and, and a few men, who've contacted her organization regarding similar complaints. And what's interesting is the way that these issues have been able to stay quiet. As both women noted, there's a clause in the fine print of their contracts that says they um, must uh, go through an arbitration process if they have complaints. And that's something that keeps them from being able to take these into a courtroom a civil courtroom and have a public trial where these issues come out and where other women might then um, know about them and also it might push the company itself to spell out more clearly any kind of sexual harassment policy to put in place a clear set of procedures where there is a sexual assault. All of those things are able to have been able to keep quite quiet over the last couple of years. Um, and in Lisa's case, it's, it's interesting because it's one, one of the alleged perpetrators is a U.S. soldier and the other is a KBR employee. So the military uh, CID, their investigative uh, branch, will, is currently investigating the incident. They could decide to court-martial the U.S. soldier and hold a trial. Um, and, uh, but it's not clear whether they have any jurisdiction over the uh, civilian KBR employee. And um, that's really been an issue that's come up quite a bit uh, between Blackwater and other incidences. But here, unlike Blackwater, where um, it was a U.S. Con defense contractor who was a security contractor who um, is uh, shot Iraqi civilians, here the two, both the victim and the alleged perpetrator, are U.S. citizens, and the incident took place on a U.S. military base, which means that the Justice Department actually has uh, jurisdiction over uh, pursuing this case, pressing charges, and bringing this to trial in a federal court. Um, but whether they'll decide to do that or not is unclear because they haven't done that. They haven't successfully prosecuted uh, a single violent crime against uh, U.S. contractors over there, despite the fact that there's 180,000 um, U.S. contractors over there right now in the Middle East, which is a shockingly high number uh, of people not to have a single um, criminal prosecution um, uh, take place. So what's happening right now, I think, and what's, uh, what Jamie Lee Jones has been able to successfully do is kind of push uh, the American people to look a little more closely at this and hopefully, ultimately, push the Justice Department to actually pursue some of these cases, because at this point, um, there's no indication that they're doing so with any of these incidences. How did the military and how did KBR respond to your investigation, Karen Hooper? Um, the military said it cannot release any information. It's currently investigating it um, unless we get a, and this, this came after our story actually already went to press. We got a statement from them saying if we got a signed statement from Lisa Smith that they might be able to release some details. So we're working on that right now. Um, uh, but um, KBR sent us 
a statement quite similar to the one that you read saying that um, you know they took all complaints against uh, of sexual assault or sexual harassment quite seriously they had a zero tolerance policy etc their statement they gave us was very similar to the one um, that you received but they did also um, send a reply to um, Lisa Smith's attorney uh, a letter when he sent a letter when he first began representing her and sent them a letter saying that and that they should retain any paperwork or anything related to this investigation in her complaint. Um, they responded um, very swiftly and um, among other things um, disputed the accuracy of her claims and also um, said that she was free to remain in the United States if she wanted because she's actually supposed to report back to, for work to Dubai, I believe this week. Um, but that she would um, not, she would, it would have to be unpaid leave. So they're not going to pay her anymore. She can file for unemployment if she wants. Um, but, um, you know, that was there. And they reminded her again that she was required to enter into the um, dispute resolution um, arbitration procedures that are outlined in her contract. And, um, several times. It's worth noting um, that uh, when I spoke with Lisa Smith a couple of uh, earlier this week, she mentioned that several times when she was talking to different people, KBR employees, about her complaint, she was asked to sign a statement again, a non-disclosure sa statement, saying that she wouldn't talk about these issues publicly. And um, I think that, uh, you know, that's a very troubling precedent for uh, the company to be setting in the, under these circumstances, too. Let me go back to Lisa Smith. Lisa, as you're calling yourself now, why did you decide to testify before Congress and you reveal your identity when you do that tomorrow? I, the only resolution that I see that's going to come out of this at all is that KBR hopefully will be encouraged to write a policy to make it accessible for their employees to get the help they need without making their employees feel even more insecure than they already do. Um, currently, KBR has done nothing other than remind me to be silent and uh, anything that I've trusted from any of the KBR employees that I have spoke with has ultimately turned around and uh, been a fact-finding mission for them with giving me no information and no safety and no security. That needs to change for their employees. Um, that I, I don't know how to stress that. Employees need to be able to go to their employer if there is a problem and at least have some sense of safety. And um, it wasn't until four days before I left the country 